Hey, this is Andrew, Trails Coordinator for the Adirondack Mountain Club. Today, we are building better trails. Today, we're gonna to head up above treeline to one of the Adirondack Park's highest summits to explore alpine trail work. This is a unique setting in the Adirondacks that requires some different tactics from all of us as trail workers to approach it effectively. Before we head up, I'd like to thank the Waterman Fund, whose funding made this project possible. Through education, trail rehabilitation, and research, the Waterman Fund fosters the spirit of wildness and strengthens the stewardship and understanding of alpine areas of northeastern North America to conserve their ecological, cultural, and recreational values. You can learn more about them and their mission in the description. Now let's lay the groundwork. First, what do I mean when I say tree line? This is the line on a mountain above which no trees grow. In the Adirondack Park, this area is also home to the Alpine Zone, which is a highly sensitive ecosystem left over from the Ice Age. Alpine vegetation grows in thin, acidic soils that easily erode away if stepped on, which means that it only takes a few bootsteps to kill many of these plants. As a result, we need to take extra precaution, both as hikers and as trail workers, to ensure that this ecosystem remains protected. However, it isn't quite as easy to define a trail above tree line as it is in the forest below. Whenever we break tree line, we find ourselves in a wide open space with very few physical obstructions. Without a clear reference point, hikers can easily wander off trail. Because this causes immediate impacts in the alpine vegetation, we need to do everything we can through trail design to ensure that hikers know where the trail is and feel comfortable staying on it. Thankfully, we have a few tools at our disposal to make this happen. The most basic trail defining feature found above tree line are yellow blazes. These are painted on bare rock to define the path for hikers. Pretty simple, though they require a lot of annual maintenance to remain visible. Perhaps the most iconic alpine trail feature is the rock cairn, not to be mistaken with rock stacks. These two to four foot tall structures are placed at regular intervals on open summits to guide hikers through inclement weather. These require a lot of work to construct as they need to stand up against gale force winds and be placed strategically so they are visible from certain angles. In specific circumstances, we can also use lumber. Last month, our professional trail crew built a ladder on the trail to Iroquois. This decision was made after the land manager saw significant impacts around the base of a steep rock scramble near the summit. Instead of taking the scrambles, hikers were skirting around it and impacting alpine vegetation along the way. By establishing a more defined route up the scramble, the hope is that hikers will stay on the trail and more importantly, off the surrounding vegetation. Another aspect of alpine trail work is, of course, the unique challenges it presents. Not only do trail workers have to take extra care to avoid damaging alpine vegetation, but they also have to work with limited resources. For example, stones used to build structures like cairns or rock walls are often carried from miles away. Workers also have to be very careful not to remove existing stones or materials from the summit, as they might have long-term impacts in the area. We are looking to minimize impacts, not create more. All in all, proper trail design is key to balancing outdoor recreation and resource protection in the Alpine Zone. Whether it's through building cairns or painting blazes, providing visual cues to hikers along the trail helps minimize impacts to alpine vegetation and maximizes the hiker experience. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos from ADK. Follow the links below and learn more about ADK, our vision for building better trails, and how you can help as a member, donor, and a volunteer.